Hi, this is Ryan with TestingTheory.com, and today we're going to talk about monetizing test results. We'll talk about the benefits of doing it, we'll talk about how you should do it, and most importantly, we'll talk about an important caveat you need to understand when you do monetize your test results. If you're doing any kind of A-B testing and you are not monetizing your test results, you're really missing out. There are really four major benefits of monetizing your test results, and I want to start there. Before we talk about how to do it, I want you to understand why you should do it and the value of doing it. The first value add and benefit of monetizing your test results is that it allows you to compare all of your test results to each other. When you're running tests, the tests are in different locations, they're testing different things, they're looking at different success metrics even sometimes, and if you're not monetizing those tests, it's really hard to compare the value of all of those tests across the spectrum to each other to know which tests were the best, to know which tests are the most impactful in the business. The reason why this benefit is so important is because it leads to the next benefit, which is by monetizing your test results and being able to compare your test results, you're better able to evaluate the efficiency of your tests and also able to evaluate future opportunities that you should be testing. What do I mean by evaluate the efficiency and the value of your tests? is you can see that some tests are really great and some tests are really poor. And when you have a single monetized metric to compare the value of tests, you're able to see which tests are the worst. When you know which tests are the worst and which tests are the best, you're able to identify the patterns and trends that helps you run more tests that are better in future tests. So I hope you see the pattern here. When you monetize your test results, you can compare all your tests to each other. When you can equally compare your tests, you can see which tests did well and didn't do well, which better helps you to evaluate the efficiency of your tests. When you can better evaluate the efficiency of your tests, you can better plan future tests to maximize the efficiency and maximize the gains of those future tests. Another major benefit of monetizing your test results is it allows people in the organization to see the true value and impact that the testing team is having on the organization and on the business. If you want to create buy-in for your testing, people need to know that you're valuable. And if they don't know that you're valuable and the impact you're having on the business, they're less likely to care. But a monetized value of your test results helps you get a monetized value of your testing program overall, and that value of the testing program will help people see the value that you're contributing. Again, once they know the value you're contributing, it helps you get what you need to do more testing, more resources, more backing, more buy-in, more promotions, more raises, whatever you need or desire, that the monetized value of your testing program helps you get that. The last benefit that I want to share, even though there's probably many others, is that it allows you to simplify your communication about your testing results. All too often, testing grows up in an analytics group or department. And the analytics, because we all love data, we want to show multiple metrics, like this metric went up and this metric went up and this one went down, but that's okay. All that is nice and interesting, but you need to simplify the communication about your test results and when you can give one monetized impact number of the value that test contributed to the business, you have simplified the value in communication in a way that executives can understand quickly, anyone in the organization can understand quickly. When you simplify your communication of the value you're contributing, you allow people to internalize it and understand it so much quicker. Okay, so those are some of the benefits of monetizing your test results. I hope after hearing those, you're all in, you see the value of monetizing, and you want to do it. Now, let me show you how to do it, and first we're going to talk about the inputs that you need to get a good calculation on the monetized number. To calculate the monetized value of a test, you need four different inputs into the calculation. The first thing you need to know is the total visitors that were in the test. This is pretty simple. If you're running a test, you just add up that number of all the variations of the visitors that were in that test, and that is your total visitors that are in the test. Second, you need to know the total days that the test was run. Again, easy to find because each test you're running has a start date and an end date, and you're just counting up the exact number of days that that test was running. The last two things you need for inputs into calculation is the old conversion rate, meaning the conversion rate of the, the losing experience, and the new conversion rate, or the conversion rate of the winning experience. Now, I want to clarify here. The old conversion rate might just be the worst performing experience. So if your control is the winning experience and all the others had a negative lift, you still want to use the worst negative lift as the old conversion rate. And your control is your new conversion rate because it's the best conversion rate. The reason you do this is because you want to show the monetized value of the campaign, but you also are showing 
the potential loss you saved by testing the experience. If the business would have launched a version without testing it that actually had a negative lift, that saves the company from deploying something that's negative. And so that loss, the loss that you saved, is still something that you contribute to the monetized value of the test. Okay, so those are your four inputs, total visitors, total days you ran the test, your worst conversion rate, and your best conversion rate. There are also three parts to the equation that we're gonna talk about. You can do one massive equation if you want, but I like to break it down into three simple steps just to help you understand it and because it's easy on the, on the calculation. The first calculation you wanna get is your annualized total visitors. So you're going to take your total visitors that were in the test that you already have, and you're going to divide that by the number of days you ran the test. Then you're going to multiply that number by 365 days to get an annualized number. So that gives you total annualized visitors. The reason this number is important is because you, you're only running your test for a small time period. You want to say, hey, if this test had been run for the entire year with the same amount of visitors, we would want to project how many visitors that potentially would have been in the test. Now, I know that most companies have fluctuating business cycles, and maybe in January you have less visitors than you do in, in the holidays or during the summertime, but that, that doesn't matter. The point is to have a standardized way of calculating impact. This isn't trying to be precise perfectly to say this is exactly how many visitors we get throughout the year. This is a way to evaluate the impact of, of the campaign in an annualized way. Okay, the second thing that you need is you wanna create the positive change. So the positive change equals the new conversion rate minus the old conversion rate. Or to say it a different way, the positive change is your best conversion rate minus your worst conversion rate. Now that you have those two numbers, your total annualized visitors and your total positive change, you can calculate very simply your annualized impact by multiplying your total annual visitors by your total annual change. What this number gives you is your monetized annual impact. Again, annual helps you see the potential value and you're not really trying to make it perfect, but you're trying to get a comparable data point across different tests that run for a different amount of days with different amount of visitors. Okay, now again, some important notes and caveats. Now that you know the calculation, now you know why you should be doing it, the benefits of doing it, we need to talk about a few gotchas you need to avoid as you're doing this calculation. The first is the most that I see come up all the time. If you're monetizing right, and you're getting an annualized impact per test, and you're distributing that information throughout the organization so that people know the value that you're contributing, you may have, at the end of the year, some CEO or some finance person or some boss or manager come to you and say, hey, you projected all of these gains from the testing that we're doing, and when I look at the bottom line, we don't actually have those gains. What's going on? There's a couple ways you need to answer this question. First, to monetize the test isn't guaranteeing you're getting these gains. What it's doing is giving you a comparable data point so you can use it to evaluate the success or failure of tests. It's the data point in comparison that matters most. But to speak to the point that people think you're actually not contributing value if you're not actually seeing revenue increase, they have to understand that when you're getting gains, that you are potentially offsetting losses they would have otherwise had. Markets are continually fluctuating. They're moving up and down, and you might be keeping on par with the market by your optimization efforts. So by continually moving up the stream, you may just be holding steady rather than losing money. It's important to understand that gains in testing are potentially the thing that is saving the business. Whereas if you weren't doing that, the company otherwise may have, may have lost a lot of money. So remember, it's the comparable data points the most, that's most important. But if you're not seeing the exact value of the gains you're projecting with your testing, it may just be because you're saving the company from worse things. And if it really looks different and there's a drastic swing in what's actually happening, you may want to make sure that you're actually interpreting data the right way so you're not giving um, a false value of how large a gain is. And what I mean by that is make sure that you have sufficient data, consistent data, and differentiated data, and that the lifts you're calling are actually true lifts. Um, I have other videos on that, so check those out, but make sure you're interpreting your data the right way to make sure that you, when you get an annualized number, it's not based on some fluff because you didn't have enough data in the test. The last gotcha that I already mentioned, which I wanna reiterate, is when you have a losing test and the control is better than the variations, you still want to use the absolute value of that test to get a potential positive monetized impact because you're, you're using the absolute value to say this is a, a gain um, even though it's really a loss that you saved. So use absolute values when your control is the best experience and, and make that a positive number as well so you can get that equal comparison. You don't want to have a comparison where one is a negative number because you, it was a save and one is a positive number because it was a gain. 
that, that ruins the point of comparing your data sets. You want to make sure you use absolute value so you have an equal comparison of the tests you're running, even though some of them will be a loss. So in summary, there are so many benefits to monetizing and annualizing the impact of your tests, and I encourage you to do it with all the tests you run. Get that comparable data point so you can evaluate the efficiency of your tests, understand how to run future tests. It helps you understand the impact your team is having on the organization. It also helps you simplify the communication and communicating test results and the value that you're creating. To get your total annual impact, you multiply your total annualized visitors by your total benefit of the test. And remember the gotchas. Just because the numbers are looking great, you have to understand what that data means, that you're potentially saving the company from a loss, and that you want to make sure you have good data interpretation practices so you're not monetizing something that isn't actually real. Thanks for joining me today. If you like this video, please give me the thumbs up. You can also visit me at testingtheory.com if you're interested in a free consulting session with me. We'll talk about your business and your strategy, your testing that you're doing. Testingtheory.com is where professional testers turn to do better testing and get more conversions. Thanks.